Hello everyone and welcome to the video. Today we are going to be discussing the upcoming release for the Arkham Horror LCG, The Wages of Sin, the second Mythos pack in the Circle Undone campaign cycle. In this video we will go over the synopsis of the scenario, as well as the new cards and mechanics introduced in this Mythos pack. Lastly, I'll give you my overall thoughts and impressions on the scenario, and how I feel the Circle Undone campaign cycle is shaping up to be. Following the events of the secret name, we find the investigators of Arkham and Hangman's Hill, the city's old sullen graveyard. They're here to investigate reports of ghost sightings and strange activities in the woods nearby the last few nights, and to learn more about the witches who once hid in Arkham's past. Witches who have since emerged from the shadows in pursuit of some unholy or eldritch purpose. Stepping into the hollowed ground of the graveyard, the feeling of lifeless souls peering through an unseen plane of existence consumes the investigators. A spectral force cries out from beyond the veil with a bone-chilling shrill. Surrender to the path of sacrifice. Consider the good of all before you act. Let go. In the Wages of Sin, we are immediately presented with one of the scenario's new mechanics. Rather than starting on their unrevealed side, the locations have two revealed sides, one being in the plane of reality the investigators exist on, the other taking them to the spectral plane. Uncovering the secrets of the abandoned chapel, for instance, may cause it to flip to its spectral side. What specifically causes these locations to flip isn't mentioned in the article itself, but my guess is that certain cards in the encounter deck either force the investigators to make a check, and failure of that check haunts them, or locations are forced to flip from a particular condition being met on an encounter card. As for the abandoned chapel itself, it is a two-shroud location that comes into play with two clues per investigator. The chapel is connected to four other locations, and awards one victory point, and has a passive ability that states, During the mythos phase, each investigator in abandoned chapel gets minus one to each skill. Flipping this card to its spectral side, it retains its shroud value, passive ability, as well as victory points in connected locations. The changes come with the addition of a new ability that reads, Haunted. Until the end of the round, you get minus one to each skill. This location, while brutal to have to stay in during the mythos phase, and even worse if you're haunted, can be a breeze in solo play. Its low shroud value, combined with ease of access of getting into, the chapel can be moved into, exhausted of its clues, and moved out of before entering the mythos phase. While seekers have the easiest time pulling this off with cards like Shortcut, Working a Hunch, or an already played Pathfinder, other classes can do this as well. In multiplayer, this location scales to be a far more threatening location to have to clear. The party's clue gatherer will likely have to spend at least an entire round gathering all the clues in this location to earn that sweet, sweet, sweet point, and will have to endure with a negative modifier during the entire mythos phase. This not only makes whatever card you draw from the encounter deck more difficult, but I also believe the wording of the ability suggests that the other cards in the encounter decks will also force each investigator to test their mental. Wait, 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 wait. Encounter decks? In addition to each location having two revealed sides, we're also quickly introduced to the scenario's other new mechanic, a second encounter deck. This spectral encounter deck will be the deck you draw from during any mythos phase which you are in a spectral location. I personally like this mechanic. It provides the scenario with a unique flavor while also hearkening back to the Harkham Horror board game. While a fairly simple mechanic, there is a lot of potential for this new card design. Showing off some of this new potential, FFG spoiled two of the encounter cards in the Wages of Sin, the first of which being the Malevolent Spirit. This enemy card has two fight, two health, and four evade. The Malevolent Spirit has the Monster, Geist, and Spectral traits. It spawns in the Chapel Attic or Chapel Crypt. The Spirit deals one horror upon attack and has a passive ability that states, While Malevolent Spirit is at a Spectral location, it gains Hunter and gets plus one damage value and plus one horror value. It also has a second ability that reads, When Malevolent Spirit is defeated by damage, except from a spell or a relic, instead of discarding it, Heal all damage from it, exhaust it, and move it to a spectral location if able. While not being much of a threat in the realm of the living, 
In the spectral plane, this recursive spirit hunts you down and eats away at your sanity quickly. Mystic class investigators are best equipped at permanently dealing with this enemy, with cards like Shriveling and Spirit of Thame. Investigators from other classes, meanwhile, will have a much more difficult time at dealing with this ghastly foe. While Ornate Bow or Time Worm Brand can slay the ghost without much of a problem, they come at a heavy experience cost. With a 4 of aid, it can be difficult to get away from this monster for the investigators that are less than dexterous. The malevolent spirit, however, is not the only new challenge the investigators will have to face. The second encounter card spoiled in the preview article, Gravelight, is a treachery card with the curse trait. It has an interesting two-part ability that reads, Revelation. If Gravelight is drawn from the standard encounter deck, shuffle it into the spectral encounter deck, and it gains surge. Or, if Gravelight is drawn from the spectral encounter deck, take two damage and place it in the standard encounter discard pile. This card is unique in its design. I like the concept of cards having different effects depending on which encounter deck they were drawn from. Interacting with both of the encounter decks in this way carries with it a strong sense of foreboding from a mechanical standpoint. This card, however, I feel stumbles a bit from a gameplay perspective. The effect of this card, if drawn from the standard encounter deck, is typical of cards of this nature, but drawing this card from the spectral encounter deck, however, has the potential to outright defeat an investigator, which I personally dislike. I would have preferred this card to have some sort of skill test involved in taking damage, like Grasping Hands. That would have provided some player agency and reduced the likelihood of those feel-bad moments, especially in multiplayer. That being said, I do hope that we have other encounter cards like Gravelight in this Mythos pack. In the non-malevolent spirit of the holidays, FFG has spoiled a host of new allies to join the investigators on their journeys in this article. Alice Luxley, Fearless Flatfoot, is a 4-cost guardian asset with one intellect skill icon. She has the ally, detective, and police traits. Alice has 2 health and 2 sanity and takes up the ally slot. She has a passive ability that states, You get plus 1 intellect. And a reaction ability that reads, After you discover a clue, exhaust Alice Luxley. Deal 1 damage to an enemy at your location. Alice provides guardians with respectable clue gathering skills while still filling the role of the party's primary damage dealer. Reasonably costed, and a decent health and sanity pool mean you can play her early and she will stay around for some time. The static intellect boost supports her reaction ability to deal damage to enemies at your location. While investigating would normally trigger attacks of opportunity, Alice also works well with cards like Scene of the Crime or Working a Hunch, triggering her reaction ability while also staying out of harm's way. Investigators like Roland Banks or Rex Murphy can make good use of her reaction ability. With Alice's aid, Roland can quickly clear waves of enemies while also discovering clues to help the party members advance the act deck. Rex, similarly, can supplement his excellent clue gathering with free damage to enemies that may be engaged with other investigators at his location. Moving on to the next ally, we have Mr. Rook, dealer in secrets. Mr. Rook is a 3 cost seeker asset with one willpower skill icon in the ally trait. He has 2 health and 2 sanity and takes up the ally slot. He comes into play with three secrets and has a fast action that reads, Exhaust Mr. Rook and spend one secret. Search the top three, six, or nine cards of your deck for any card and draw it. If at least one weakness is among the searched cards, draw one of them as well. Shuffle your deck. Again, we're spoiled with an excellent ally. While it may seem detrimental to draw a weakness while using his ability, it doesn't come at the cost of your upkeep phase or a draw action, and still provides you with card advantage. If your investigator's weakness isn't something like Call of the Unknown, getting your weakness out of the way early can prevent it from coming back to haunt you later in the scenario. With three spins of the wheel, so to speak, you have the potential to dig through 27 cards to find what you need, then have Mr. Rook soak up damage for your investigator. Mr. Rook makes level 0 no stone unturned look obsolete, though the level 5 version is still pretty good. I wouldn't be surprised if this was the best player card to come out of this Mythos pack. The final ally spoiled in this preview article is Henry I, Aspiring Actor. Henry is a 3 cost rogue asset with one agility icon. He has the ally and criminal traits and takes up the ally slot. He has one health and two sanity and has an action that reads, Exhaust Henry Wong. One at a time, reveal random tokens from the chaos bag until you choose to stop, or until you reveal a skull, cultist, tablet, Elder Thing, or Auto Fail Symbol. If you choose to stop, 
For each token revealed via this effect, you may either draw one card or gain one resource. If you revealed a skull, cultist, tablet, elder thing, or auto fail symbol, do nothing. Ending on a bit of a low note with this ally, while it could be fun to try Henry in a Chaos Bag manipulation deck, those decks tend to require a lot of setup and, well, offer very little benefit. Rogues have no shortage of gaining resources, and if you want to draw cards there are also better options available. Pickpocketing, Decorated Skull, and Lucky Cigarette Case require less setup and don't press your luck against the will of the great old ones. Henry also has the lowest health and sanity pool among the allies spoiled thus far. I don't see myself wanting to play Henry over something like Leo DeLuca. The Wages of Sin seems like a fun and unique experience, whether playing it standalone or as part of the Circle Undone campaign. I'm interested to see how the addition of the Spectral Encounter deck will play out in this scenario, as well as finding out more about the Haunted mechanic. This campaign cycle as a whole seems to be pushing the design space in a new direction, allowing for more creativity in scenario setups as well as the types of player cards we can expect. I want to hear from you though. What do you think about this Mythos pack? Do you like the idea of two encounter decks? Will we see more multi-class cards in this pack? Leave your thoughts down in the comments below. If you made it this far into the video, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please leave it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe for more Arkham related content.